Hello everyone, welcome to our I Love Learning's YouTube channel. I'm Clary Slim, you can call me Mrs. Wee. Children call me Mrs. Wee. Okay, so uh, today we're going to touch on science. This is uh, the topic is on living and non-living things. So you can see on my screen over here that uh, I have some pointers. So in science, how do we encourage children to score points and then to answer the questions, especially the short answer uh, questions? It is usually on keywords and a lot of parents are always asking me, so what exactly are the keywords? It's quite confusing. So what we do at I Love Learning is that we actually give students a very concise um, keywords that they need to know and uh, we will usually summarize them in front of the worksheets for them so over here you can see on my screen I've already summarized it for you so you can see that there are six points over here for living and non-living things you can you will have to memorize unfortunately you need to memorize these six points that living things need air food and water to survive this is point number one all living things, there are five factors in living things that you need to remember that they grow, they are able to move by themselves, they are able to respond to changes in their surroundings, they are able to reproduce and they are able to die or they can die, they will die. Okay, so these are the six points altogether that you need in order to answer a lot of the living and non-living things questions in the test paper. There are other things you need to know as well in order to answer the section A, M, C, Q. So these are factors such as uh, like plants. There are two types of plants. There's flowering plants and non-flowering plants. And what are some of the examples of each one of them? Over there you can see on the screen. And uh, animals, there are five types of animals that they need to know. For example, mammals. Mammals have head. That's the most basic uh, uh, categorization of mammals that they have hair or fur on their body. So examples like cat, dolphin, human. So you need to know a few examples of each category of animals. Of course, the more you know, the better it is. Birds have feathers. For example, eagle, sparrow, ostrich. And then we have fish. They breathe through gills like goldfish, guppy, shark. Insects have three body parts, one pair of feelers, six legs, and these are the examples. Amphibians live on land and in water, then that's an example. And reptiles, dry skin, covered with scales, and those are the examples. And then you further on, there will be fungi reproduced through spores, and bacteria reproduced by dividing. So all these are the things that you will need to know in order to solve some of the Section A questions. Of course, some this, of, this knowledge will also be good and handy in Section B. And uh, what else do you need to remember in order to answer questions from this topic? You will need to know that animals can be similar to or different from each other in these following ways. For example, their size, their shapes, their colors, their type of body covering, their type of food that they eat, the way they move, the way they reproduce, and where they live. Okay, so these are the notes that you need to memorize in order to answer questions relating to this topic. I will show you how and what kind of questions there are that you can answer to. Okay, let's take a look at this question. A bat and an owl do not belong to the same group of animals. Write down two characteristics which make them different from each other. So, what kind of question is this? This is the living and non-living thing question, okay, which I've already identified for you. So you know that this topic asks us for the difference in the groups of animals. So they already said here, the keyword over here is the same group of animals. So what are the group of animals that you have learned? Okay, let's scroll back and see what are the groups of animals that you have learned. You learned about birds, fish, insects, amphibians, reptiles. So these are the groups and of course there is mammals. Okay, so between these two, one bat, one owl, what you need to know already at the back of your head is that owl is a bird. A bat is a mammal because a bat does not have feathers, whereas a bird has feathers. So when you see this keyword, same group of animals, straight away you know you are being asked the category of animals and the difference between them will be that this one has hair, bat has hair, owl has feathers. That will be one answer for you already. So what else can you think about? Remember just now I told you we can also compare the way they move, the way they reproduce, where they live, type of body covering, we've already mentioned that, type of food that they eat, and the size and the shape and the color. If you do not know any of this, one thing that you will need to know is that the way they reproduce is different. So the bat reproduce by giving birth to young and the owl lays eggs. So this is the tool that you can answer. So what will the answer be over here? That 
they reproduce uh, using different methods. If not, you can directly just say bats give birth to young while ours lay eggs. Okay, that will be one of the answer. And the other answer will be just now as what we've mentioned, uh, that will be bats have hair as their outer covering while owls have feathers. That will be your answer. Okay, any other answers pertaining to this, for example, or they spread their wings or they are standing on the, on the tree branch and all these are non-scientific answers, it will not be accepted. So you need to remember what are the keywords that you have learned in this topic and use the keywords in the topic in order to get the answers. Okay, now let's look at this question next. Okay, this is a very common question. Rainy bought a new plant and she placed it in a cardboard box as shown below. Okay, over here there's a plant. The plant looks healthy but its stem is slanting towards the right over here, pointing towards the hole. So children will always answer it the most obvious way. Why is the stem of the plant growing in a slanted way? So they will most likely say the plant is slanting towards the hole. Okay, now you think about this answer. This answer has no scientific facts inside. You did not learn any. There are keywords that you have learned that is not in your answer. So how do you make sure that your answer is according to what you have learned? So you need to re reverse back to what you have learned. Remember the keywords that you have learned over here. Okay, let's revise. Living things. So what is the main thing that made the plant slant to the side? So are they slanting to the hole or are they responding to changes in the surrounding? Okay, I know you got the answer. So why is the stem of the plant growing in a slanted way? So what you can say is that plants are living things and they respond to changes in the surrounding, which in this case will be the light coming from the hole. Okay, no light is mentioned over here, but it is a context, it is a knowledge that the children are supposed to understand in this man, in, in this context. So it is a cardboard box that is it is assumed that children know plants are supposed to get light. Okay, they will go towards light. So what is the answer over here? So you would want to say things like this plants are living things which respond to changes in their surroundings which in this case it is slanted to the hole where light is found okay so where are the keywords the keywords will be respond to changes and slanted to the light Okay, if you only return slanted to the hole, that will be completely wrong. There will be zero marks. Okay, so you might see that this answer is a bit long. You can in fact say they respond to changes in the surroundings, but that will only fetch you half a mark because you did not say what is the change in the surrounding and how did the plant end up slanting. Therefore, the light at the second part is important to give you another half of the mark. Otherwise, it will be an incomplete sentence. Okay, so always remember, what did you learn? You need the science concept inside your answer. So what can Rini do to make her plant grow straight again? So this one, the teacher is trying to test that they have the normal, the common knowledge that if they want the plant to grow up, they should respond to where the light is found, which means you need to make a hole at the top of the cardboard box. Then the plant will go up. Okay, where the light is. So it is actually very similar to question one. So what can Rainy do to make her plant grow straight again? Uh, she will need to poke a hole at the top of the box. So again, there is no keyword there. The keyword is light. You need to put in the word light. She will need to poke a hole at the top of the box in order to allow light to pass through. Okay, in that way, the plant will grow straight up again. So the light is the keyword. Besides sunlight, what are two other conditions needed for the plant for healthy grower? Remember, all living things need air, food and water. So if sunlight food is provided, what is the other two conditions that is needed? The plant will need 
air and water. So that will be the answer. Okay, the plant will need air and water in order to grow. Okay, so that will be the scientific answer that you will need for this question. Okay, now let's look at this next question. Very common question. So remember what you have learned in living things and uh, non-living things. So um, living things need air, food and water to grow. So these are the three things that you need to remember. So in this picture, what will likely happen to the lizard after a week? So what is inside the jar over here? There is water, there is food, which is the flies. And what is missing will be the air because there's a plastic cover completely covering it and it's a glass jar no air can go in so after one week when air or the much needed oxygen is used up by the lizard the lizard will die so what is the answer over here that you need to write what will likely happen to the lizard after a week the lizard will die and you get one mark for that easy so explain your answer in A as clearly as possible. So when they say clearly, what you need to remember is that what do you, what have you learned in this topic, this science concept, this topic tells you that living things need air, food and water to survive. So explain your answer. Therefore, you can put in the entire sentence, living things need air, food and water to survive. However, air will run out for the lizard after some time. Therefore, the lizard will die. You might think that, wow, it's only one month. Do I really need to write so much? To be safe. Yes, you need to. If you really want to cut short, you can say living things need air to survive. Therefore, when air runs out for the lizard, it will die. That will be a shorter way for you to answer. If not, to make it simple for your kids, memorize these keywords that they need. They need air, food and water to survive. Living things grow, living things move themselves. You can plug this entire thing into the question. It makes it easier for the children. They don't need to pick and choose. They just need to look at the situation plug in one keyword, one concept that they have learned from the topic and explain it according to the situation in the question, they will get the full marks. This will give them a safety net that they will not have, they will not risk any minusing of marks. So next question suggests a change that should be made to the setup so that the lizard is able to survive longer without escaping from the glass jar. So this one is again, um, the teacher is testing to see if you understood what you were trying to say. So just now you said living things need air, the lizard needs air. So therefore, what can you do? Very simply, poke holes uh, in the plastic cover. So that, you see, the most important thing in this question is that so that the lizard does not escape. Okay, so the lizard does not escape. Another thing that you need to understand is that the flies must not be able to escape. Because if the flies escape, there will be no more food for the lizard. Then the lizard will not be able to survive longer. Therefore, if your children's answer or your answer is actually to remove the plastic cover, you will not get it right. It will be wrong because the flies will fly away and the lizard will go. So you need to poke holes. It's a very specific answer. Poke holes in the plastic cover. So that the lizard and the flies would not be able to escape yet be able to allow air to enter for the lizard. Okay, I hope you learned something today. So remember, every time before you want to answer a question, identify what topic it is. Remember what are the science concepts you learned for that topic. Put in the keywords that you have learned from that topic in order to answer the questions accurately. Okay, that's all for today. Do subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be informed of new videos coming up. Bye-bye!